All right, we finally made it from Orlando. We're here in downtown Miami at the beautiful Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science. Aaron, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for taking us in today and giving us the tour. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at Frost Science? Yeah, so I'm a senior aquarist here at Frost Science, and what I do is I take care of all of the animals that you see here at the museum. That includes all of our fish, our reptiles, our birds, our invertebrates, and our sharks. Oh, nice, nice. So, what you're looking at right here is our Great Barrier Reef exhibit. It kind of represents what you would see if you were diving on the Great Barrier Reef. It's 20 feet wide, mm -hmm. it's 10 feet back, and seven and a half feet tall. Uh, we're, we're seeing about 12,000 gallons in here, and about 600 fish. Wow, that's a, lot, that's a lot of fish. Now, how do you feed this uh, big tank? <laughs> <laughs> so these guys get fed three times a day. As you can see, we have loads of antheas in here, mm -hmm. about 250 of them. Uh, they have a pretty quick metabolism, so they need to be fed fairly often. I just did my morning, or their breakfast feed. Uh -huh. They're gonna get lunch in a couple hours, and then dinner. We're gonna give them a mixture of pellets of all sizes, because we have all sizes of fish in here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna give them a bunch of PE mices, Hikari mices, Pacifica krill, and uh, various other algae substitutes, such as nori. Wow, but they, they eat really good, that's great to see. They're nice and fat, and the colors are amazing. Uh, the majority of the fish we have here are schooling antheas uh -huh. and our blue chromis. Uh, you'll see a variety of tangs, including our largest tang, this uh, bump head tang in the back. He's cool. And uh, you'll also see some little uh, pickers, you know, our trigger fish. We have some butterflies, some wrasses that are going around and picking things off the corals for us. Nice. Now, what kind of corals do you have in here, mainly? So, we have a variety of corals. Uh, everything from anemones, like our big carpet anemone mm -hmm. back here. Uh, all the way to some SPS, you know, some acros. We have some Montipora uh, in here. We also have some acans, Pacillopora, uh, whatever you can think of, uh, we've probably got it in here. Nice, that's great. Now, I noticed this is kind of similar to what I do at my house or in my shop with the equipment, the flow, the lights and everything like that. Can you tell me, is there anything that's really different between this and the, and the aquarium that you have at home as far as taking care of it? I would say the biggest difference between my 20 gallon at home and this tank here is that this one is 500 times larger. But everything else is pretty identical. Everything from our calcium reactors to our lights mm -hmm. uh, to even the way that we stock and feed is just like a small aquarium that I have at home, uh, but in a very large scale. It's nice. It's like we're bridging the gap between the hobbyist at home and then the big aquariums that you see here at like Frost Science. Exactly. I mean, I'm just amazed at the, the coloration of the corals, the health of the fish, I mean, the diversity in there. This is, has to be one of my favorite reef tanks that I've ever seen. I mean, you guys are doing a great job taking care of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, what do you do for light and what do you do for flow in this tank? So, our lighting is uh, 14 300 watt max spec LEDs. Ooh. Three or four feet above the exhibit here. Okay. Uh, and then for flow, we have two Hydra Wizards. Those are mounted on the back of the exhibit. Okay. So, uh, this aquarium is shaped ovular. Uh, what that does for us is it allows us to blast some of that concentrated flow in the back and against the walls. It diverts the flow and creates a lot of random flow back here. On yeah. top of our Hydra Wizards are programmed to generate uh, some different flow cycles and randomness. Uh, you can get a good look at that by looking at things like our Duncans or some of our longer polyp mm -hmm. LPS corals. Absolutely. Uh, and get an idea of what the flow looks like in here. One thing I didn't ask you about is your water change regime. How do you take care of this with the water changes? So fortunately, we actually have an unlimited supply of water uh -huh. right here. We're on the port of Miami, uh -huh. so we're actually able to take the water in at high tide and uh, ozonate that water, filter it, and then uh, buffer it to 160 ppm alkalinity, or 9 dKH. Okay. And then uh, we can use that for our water changes. We're doing two water changes a week, uh -huh. uh, and we can bump that up if we need to, or even bump up the gallonage if we need to, because yeah. we have that supply of water. Nice. Yeah, I'm a big believer in water changes, I mean, for mm -hmm. successful reef aquarium. There's so many different ways of doing it, you know, but it's kind of cool to see how you guys are doing it very similar to like how we do it at Worldwide Corals. Exactly. You know, with the husbandry and then taking care of the corals, the fish, and the feedings and stuff like that. We believe in heavy feedings, you know, managing your nutrients by, you know, uh, your water changes for sure. And that's exactly what we do here. Uh -huh. We have tons of fish in here, they get tons of food, yeah. so that nutrients could become a problem really quickly. Sure. We're able to combat that with some filtration uh, mechanics, but also our water changes. Yeah, I see you had a big uh, skimmers back there. They're about seven foot tall, right? They are, at least seven foot tall. Yeah. And you know, just like I was saying with my 20 gallon, it yeah. looks exactly, almost identical yeah. to my fractionator or my protein skimmer on my 20 gallon tank. Yeah. It's just set up behind a 12,000 gallon uh -huh. tank. That was amazing. I'm here with Paul Gale. Paul, introduce yourself. 
Hi, my name is Paul Gale. I'm an aquarist here at Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science, and this is our aquaculture exhibit. This is amazing, Paul. I really like what you guys have done to this tank. I see you have a lot of stony corals, and uh, towards the bottom you have some soft corals. Tell me a little bit about how you keep up with the tank and, and your care for it. So this system, I actually keep it fairly simple on uh -huh. the system. Um, I keep up with the mineral demand via apex dosers. Okay. It receives about 500 milliliters a day of a concentrated soda ash solution mm -hmm. and about the same of a concentrated calcium chloride solution. Um, as far as maintenance and feeding, this system gets about a 25% water change using natural seawater that we've ozonated and UV sterilized, nice. as well as buffered to reach the proper pH and alkalinity. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as feeding, I feed this tank twice weekly with a small, with a fine coral food. I also add about 10 mils daily of acro power, as well as 0.25 mils of a, about 0.25 addition of coral tray solution. Nice combo. I can see you're really keeping up on it. The colors are amazing on the SPS. The growth is amazing. I see the coralline algae down here growing. How do you guys care for that and clean that up? So that is probably one of the most time-consuming aspects of this tank. Um, really, as far as cleaning it, we have to use manual scraping. Um, obviously, it's acrylic, so we can't use any metal blades. Um, flipper magnets have actually been a huge help in controlling that. Sure. It allows us to get kind of in those nooks and crannies where the corals are starting yeah. to grow towards the glass, so we don't have to worry about damaging the coral, moving the rock work, right. anything like that. Nice. That's excellent. I mean, it's just beautiful. What are you using for lighting on this? So lighting, I'm using two Kessel 360 Narrows, as well as two Gen 5 Radions and two Gen 4 Radions. Okay, nice. And for flow? For flow, there are two closed loop returns on here, two Vectra L2s, and a Vectra L2 is the return as well. Excellent, excellent. And you said this is all natural seawater. I see you have some nice fish in there. Can you tell, tell me a little bit about the fish? I see clownfish, like designer clownfish, hanging out in the Ghanapur down here. So these fish were all donated by various aquaculture facilities. Mm -hmm. um, all of these are aquacultured, as well as all the corals in this system as well. Um, there's two yellow tangs, which were some of the first to be shipped out of the Oceanic Institute. Okay. They're vibrant, they're healthy, they eat well. Um, there's also a few dotty backs in here. Uh -huh. We have a neon dotty back, an uh -huh. orchid dotty back, and a splendid dotty back, uh -huh. um, as well as a Borbonius anthias. I love the Borbonius anthias, one of my favorite fish for sure. Is that a coral beauty? Yes, that is. Oh, he's beautiful too. One of my favorite angels. Yeah, did they nip at the corals at all, do you notice? I haven't noticed any problems. No. Um, that one came from Biota. That okay. was one of their aquacultured ones, and yeah. I haven't seen any issues with it harassing corals, anything like that. That's great, because sometimes people have trouble with the coral beauties, you know, eating polyps and stuff like that. I guess when you have a fish that's, you know, conditioned to that environment, aquaculture, they, they're most likely not going to eat that. They're used to eating prepared foods, mm -hmm. like you guys do. So I actually feed this system, I feed this system twice a day. Uh -huh. I feed it a small offering of live enriched adult brine in the morning. Uh -huh. And usually I feed either PE mysis and a uh -huh. mixture of dry food or hikari yeah. mysis and a mixture of dry food. Yeah. Yeah, we find that best too at our facility is to kind of mix it up. We actually have our own reef mix that we use that we came up with over the, over the years, and uh, we feed that and has a bunch of everything, everything in it, including uh, reef roids and stuff like that. So okay. it works really Excellent. well. Yeah. So you actually have worldwide corals, corals in here, right? Yes, we do. A okay. lot of these corals in here actually came from worldwide as small frags. Yeah. And obviously they've grown out into spectacular colonies, excellent coloration, wow. fantastic polyp extension, and really show the health of aquacultured fish and corals. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're excited to be here. I mean, I'm, I'm in love with this tank. I mean, it's just, it's just stunning, I'll tell you, the way it grew out. I mean, I've seen it was just frags, and you guys did a heck of a job getting it to mature and look like a real, real living reef. I mean, it's amazing. Paul, can you walk me through and tell me about some of the coral names that you have in here? Yes, yeah, certainly. So one of my favorites in this system is actually the Eflo. This one, it's uh, a little yeah. slow growing, but the coloration's good. Uh -huh. I really like the shape it's grown into, and they're one of my favorite stony corals. I love Eflos, the way they grow, the table, yeah, for sure. We also have several different varieties of millipora. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the rose millipora that's grown yeah. a very nice tabling colony, yeah. very good polyp extension, very good color as well. Yeah. Is that red planet? Yes. Okay. Looks good. Got a lot of Monty caps in here. Uh, it's kind of cool how they grew in like ridges like that. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it looks very natural and it's, it's, uh, it's all aquaculture, you said, right? hundred percent? Yep. Oh. All aquaculture. Wow. Yeah, so we have a nice colony of bird's nest coral. There's actually another colony of millipora growing underneath it. Um, some various assortment of different montipora yeah. caps, um, various tabling acros as well, some green slimer, 
some nice blue staghorn. You know, the green slammer is an underrated coral. You know, it's been around forever, but when it grows out like this, who doesn't want a piece of that in their tank? It's oh, amazing. Definitely. Beautiful polyp extension, yeah. very nice growth patterns, very hardy coral as well. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Now, Paul, one of my favorite corals, you actually have it in here, is the Space Invader Pectinia. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How did you get it to grow like that? So that Space Invader Pectinia has actually been in that location for quite a while now. Uh -huh. um, that, that area receives a good amount of upward flow uh -huh. from the return flow from the vector actually, there. It's amazing. And that's, you have various kind of pour around the tank. I mean, they're amazing. They do well for you? Do you hand feed them or? These, I actually do a broadcast feed as well as the whole tank twice a week. Okay. Um, they're in positions that I've noticed that they do really well in. Uh -huh. They receive optimum amounts of flow. Okay. And there they can really get good polyp extension. They're not getting blasted. They're not getting blasted with light as well. Yeah. So they can really grow and have those nice flowy polyps. Okay. So I guess I kind of see what you did. You kind of put the hard, harder corals up top and then towards the bottom you put the softer corals that don't require a lot of flow and a lot of, not a lot of light. Great idea. I mean, I, we, we're big advocates of that, you know, position the corals right. Um, do you have any challenges getting flow to the bottom of the, bottom of the tank at all? Um, the only challenge is actually going to be in that back area there. Okay. Where um, it only really becomes a challenge once this Capricornus starts uh -huh. to grow up and kind of kind of grow towards the Euphelia garden back there. Yeah. Um, but the flow is actually in a gyroscopic motion. Okay. So the flow goes from that return. Uh -huh. um, the return flow actually goes around and we have an additional an additional outlet for the flow okay. around that corner. Uh, if you want to take a look, they gave us a shout out here. That's our, our farm, or our old farm actually, before um, we sold it. One thing that's really cool, I noticed you use a lot of the uh, hobbyist grade uh, equipment to maintain this tank, like the uh, Radions and the Ecotech equipment. Can you tell me a little bit of how you dose this tank? So the dosing for this system is very simple. I utilize two-part calcium chloride and soda ash uh -huh. um, supplied via Neptune Apex doser. Um, I also have a 1.1 milliliter a minute Kalkawasser drip on this system. Um, I have stock solutions made up of soda ash and calcium chloride that are highly saturated and I just top off the dosing containers as needed. Paul, this is amazing. I really appreciate you showing me everything here. I look forward to seeing how things go in the future. And thanks for the tour, and we'll see you down the road. Yeah, of course. All right. Now, Aaron, I'm super excited because I don't really see cold water exhibits, and not yeah. many people in the hobby know about cold water corals and anemones and stuff like that. Can you tell me a little bit about this amazing tank? Yeah, so this is a 250-gallon uh -huh. uh, cold water uh, octopus tank. Actually, our red octopus is hiding from us right now. But he's, he's coming out. He's hanging out. Oh, yeah, there, there he goes, he is. right there. Uh, this is his home, okay. full of some anemones, and starfish, and some uh -huh. other little uh, anemones down here. All right, Aaron, what's the temperature on this tank? So we're uh, currently running this tank at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that's cold. I don't think I want to be in there. No, so uh, <laughs> maintenance on this tank is very quick intervals, you know, uh -huh. in and out, because it gets very cold really fast. Nice, nice. Now, do the anemones react to the lighting? Uh, so they don't as much as uh, you might think. Yeah. Uh, once we got the lighting and schedule, uh -huh. you know, they, they're used to the schedule. They don't react near as, uh, near as much as you would think. I got uh, you. They are very voracious though. Yeah. So they like to eat. They like to and, eat. And we offer them food. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Now, does it require any special flow or anything different from a reef tank? So the flow in here is not near as high as you would see in a normal reef tank. Okay. I think that these anemones could withstand quite a bit more flow. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little bit easier for us and the octopus to keep the flow uh, to a minimum. Okay. So these guys okay. rely a lot on the food that we give them, okay. uh, not as much as on the light as our corals would in okay. our reef tanks. Okay. It's not as popular because it's not easy to do, but to see one here at Frost Science is amazing. Yeah, especially down here in Florida where it's so warm all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, keeping a refrigerated tank uh, is not always the easiest thing to do, but no. luckily we're able to do it here. Wow. Yeah, if I worked here, I would not want to have this for my job. <laughs> all right, cool. This is the Frost Science Wet Lab. Mm -hmm. So this is the center for all of our coral conservation and research, uh, as well as our water quality analysis lab. So we spend a lot of time up here working with these corals. They're very precious to us. Uh, they give us a lot of valuable information. We work with a lot of partners who are also into coral conservation and coral research, and we're able to get a lot of work done up here. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, just walking in, I see you have jellyfish here. Tell me a little about this whole system. This is pretty cool. It looks intricate to me. Yeah, so this is a, a series of pseudochrysals that right now we're using for uh, jellyfish culturing and grow out. 
So what's great about this system is any kind of uh, planktonic larvae, we can actually rear here. So if we're looking into reproducing urchins or shrimp or any other uh, very delicate animal, we can use this system for that. Right now we're using it for jellyfish grow out. Okay, so it's multi-purpose. It is multi-purpose. Nice, that's great. Most of this room is actually multi-purpose mm. and it's very dynamic. So this is part of the Florida Reef Track Rescue Project and we're holding uh, pillar corals in here. Pillar corals are critically endangered uh, there are not many left, as little as four on the Florida Reef Track right now, wow. uh, which is far too little to make any progress with sexual reproduction. Mm. Uh, so uh, they're facing, along with many other stony corals in the Florida Reef Track, are facing a problem called stony coral tissue loss disease. Uh, this disease has a 99% mortality rate. Right. Uh, pretty much once, it's, uh, once a coral is affected by the disease, mm. it's gone. Uh, so Florida Fish and Wildlife wanted to take an action and their action was to remove some of the healthy colonies mm. before the disease got there. Uh, and that's what these are a product of. They give these yeah. to other facilities, uh -huh. uh, such as ourselves, that are participating in the Florida Reef Track Rescue Project. And it's kind of a genetic bank for these corals. Yeah. Uh, when these were pulled from the, uh, from the reef track, we just knew that we wanted them to stay alive. Sure. You know, we weren't sure what the next steps to restoring the reef track was, mm. but we know that if we lost these corals, they were gone. Yeah. Uh, so, we're holding on to these along with a lot of our partners, and uh, they're that genetic bank that we're looking for. We want to make sure that they're there for any kind of uh, conservation uh, method that might be used in the future, whether that's reproduction, propagation, outplanting, yeah. uh, whatever that might be, we have the corals for that. And right over here, we have the remnants of two experiments going uh -huh. on. So we had one of our interns recently who just graduated this December with his master's degree, okay. working on his uh, master's project over here. He was looking at, we can, we can move these. Okay. So our intern Steven was looking at how the lighting intensities affect mm -hmm. the growth rates of this coral. Uh -huh. This is very important to us because uh, as you guys know, those uh, light changes can definitely affect the growth rates. And if yeah. we want really effective propagation methods mm -hmm. and farming, yeah. we want to grow these corals in the most effective light possible. So what that could look like in the future is if we find out exactly what lighting mm -hmm. works best for these corals, mm -hmm. then we can grow them at that lighting and get the highest yield out of it and get the most corals back out into the reef. That's fantastic. So that has impli uh, implications not only in our conservation, but also in what you guys are doing. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I, I see the connection, you know, the bridge between the hobby and, and the, the exhibits that you guys have exactly. here for all science. And you might notice that all of the hardware here are things that we're probably running on our tanks at home. Yeah. Uh, and that's because it worked in the hobby, yeah. it's working in the profession as well. Yeah. So as you talk to any of the aquarists here, mm -hmm. any of the scientists here, a lot of us have an interest in the hobby and might have even sure. started in the hobby. Yeah. Uh, so what we know about growing corals uh, happened back in my dorm room in college when yeah. I was growing corals in my little 10 gallon tank. Amazing. Uh, so now I'm able to transfer that to here and I'm able to bring with me the, the hardware that I learned to use yeah. and everything that the hobby has pioneered uh, we're able to use it here in science. So you turn your hobby into a career, basically. Exactly. That's amazing. <laughs> Kudos for that, man. And now we're ending the tour here on the rooftop at For All Science. Thanks, Aaron, for everything. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a beautiful view. I mean, it can't be that bad to work here when you come to a view like this every day. We really enjoyed the tour, the educational aspect of it, and everything you guys do here. Congratulations on everything, and keep up the great work. Thank you. We enjoyed having you guys. You got it.